Welcome to Bears in XL. Today is Friday, November the 16th, and this is the weekend market overview. And uh, looking at uh, everything that we look at almost every single night, I am getting uh, back from a week of vacation. Very nice. And uh, so, didn't look at the charts at all, all week, didn't look at uh, anything all week. So this is uh, kind of catching up for me. And so, after looking at things, starting off with the Dow, and we started out, we uh, finished last week, last Friday, uh, right here, with this uh, little doji spitting top looking nothing. Something that didn't tell us much of anything, and uh, at the time I believe I was saying that uh, it was time to wait and see, and, and that I wasn't going to see it. Um... And sure enough, it was uh, it was bad. Uh, we didn't have an uptick on the last video. We noted that. Um, so, true to form, it uh, it continued down, which is unfortunate. But um, yeah, all is not lost. Uh, certainly, we have the uh, politicos and their fiscal cliff nonsense, which, uh, from what I can tell, is ongoing since they uh, can't do anything correctly. I guess that's the best thing that we can uh, really count on. Uh, beyond that, uh, instability in the Middle East, always fun, always bad for the markets. Um, but how about now? How about today? Well, it's interesting because we have some conflicting signs. Uh, certainly the news is not going to be great towards a uh, rebound until we get something about uh, a deal being done. That could come at any time. NDEs trump all charts. And Friday, let's see here, we had uh, up day almost uh, 46 points on the Dow. And like I was saying, it's pretty darn mixed. Especially when you uh, compare the difference between the Dow and SPX, but we will get into that. Um, so here we are with the Dow. Okay. So first things first, there's some positives here. Uh, we have a hammer, bottom of a possible range, potential reversal. Um, in that line, pros and cons, it's definitely a pro. We have a first day uptick on the MACD histogram, also a pro. We also have the CCI, and the RSI, ticking up slightly. It would appear that the stochastics want to do it. We have the 14-day RSI moving average low. We have a bottoming area forming. Actually, it's pretty well already formed in the heat map. So all these things look good, right? Yeah, these things look uh, decent. Decent for getting caught. Uh, in addition to that, probably most important is that we are now into the teeth of this resistance back here. We've talked about that in previous videos. Going back here, you know, postulating whether or not it would fall into the uh, support level, which we're at now. And, uh, of course, hoping that uh, that wouldn't happen, but uh, indeed, that is what has happened. So, into support, we do have plenty of things saying, hey, maybe uh, this would be a good place. But uh, we don't have anything that's definitive yet. We don't have an uptick. Uh, we do have excessive separation. We know that there is a bubble here. We know that this is oversold. But beyond that, we have nothing saying, hey, Monday we need to bounce up. Uh, there certainly is a chance, but uh, no uptick. No uptick. Just like when we left off. Looking for an uptick, no uptick. So, um, anyways. Uh, more positive than negative? I would say yes. I would say, yes, it is more positive than negative that it would be caught at this point. But, here's the nasty part. SPX. SPX, more of the same, even closer to getting an uptick than the Dow. So, all that's good. Hammer, uh, second, same thing with all the secondaries. Um, and actually, the Dow and SPX, if we uh, zoom out more, Yes, the 14-day RSI moving average does have more room to move to the downside if it really wants to. If we zoom in, it is low already. So, but anyways, 
just for the sake of completeness, if we uh, go all the way back to June, yes, it has more room to move to the downside. But we do have the uh, first day uptick on the histogram, etc., etc., everything that we went through. Now, here's the bad part. The bad part is SPX is not into the teeth of support like the Dow. So that is definitely a problem. Um, like I was saying, closer to an uptick, but not yet an uptick in the short-term moving averages. Um, we should have a retest of the 200-day moving average in SPX and in the Dow. Here's the Dow uh, at some point. Uh, do we know that that's going to happen immediately? No, we do not. Um, so while both look like from a candle perspective and from a secondary indicator perspective that uh, a bounce should happen or is close to happening, SPX just is not in the position that the Dow is. It just isn't. That's, uh, that's all there is to it. It needs to get to uh, 1340 or better yet 1320 and it just is not there. So can we have further down on SPX and in turn drag more on the Dow, which in the Dow's case would break support? Yes. So the conclusion that I am forced to come to grips with is that we have to see if it wants to bounce. Yeah, we have to see if it gets an uptick. And hopefully it won't be a one day, uh, you know, resolve in one day uptick because then it doesn't really help us. So uh, that's where it is. Now, in the Dow's case, here we are with the Dow again. Um, let's say SPX does go down. Let's say it wants to go to its support level here, which would probably mean that the Dow will break its support level, in which case the next logical place would be down here in the 12K area. It's probably not what anyone wants to hear, but that's uh, that's what it looks like. Um, certainly, bottoming area in the heat map, it should get a bounce. We should have the 200-day moving average retested, uh, perhaps a kiss and then fall away. I uh, don't know yet, but um, that is what it is. And uh, just can't make it out to be something that it's not. Um, and there it is. Why the two are not matching up better, I'm not really sure. But uh, they are not ma matching up to the degree that we would look for, hope for, etc. Now, there's something else to consider. 60 minute time frame. Okay, so here's where we ended last week's video. All right, yeah, didn't tell us much of anything. Um, except that it had a new recent low, which was bearish. It ended up breaking down some, um, I mean, 40 points roundabout, um, which is in itself pretty bad. Uh, we still have a bottoming area minorly ending on Friday with the bounce up. Uh, here's the problem. Problem is secondaries are already pretty darn high in 60 minute time frame. Yes, they are still moving up, still have room to move up, but the problem becomes it won't be too long until they are really high in the 60 minute time frame. I'm going to zoom back a little bit just so we can see a little bit better. And you can see the stochastics, you can see the CCI, RSI, MACD histogram. Um, some of them are already pretty darn toppy. So, does this have room to move when these turn down? Uh, when these turn down, does it have mo room to move down and make a new recent low? Absolutely. They certainly do. Um, it doesn't look like they're finished on their move up, but do I think that a, a completion of the move to the upside in the 60 minute time frame is going to bust out, you know, 14K or something like that in order to break... Um, and that, actually, I'm going to show this too. To break uh, pivot points, you know, pivot high, pivot low, pivot high, pivot low, 
pivot height question mark is it going to be here is it going to be here is it going to be enough to break this pivot high uh, with the amount of room that it has on the secondaries currently uh, unless there's an NDE that comes and shoots this up uh, the answer probably is no so there it is there it is now moving on to TNA all right, TNA uh, daily time frame should lead the market as a whole, small caps. And we know it is into support. We have this uh, pivot low here, and uh, it's piercing it, bouncing off of it. Question becomes can it hold? Well, we have a bottoming area in the heat map had it all week long as it turns out and just has not finished um, that we can see a movement to the downside uh, we do not have an uptick as of Friday we have the same indication on the Dow and SPX with the uh, hammer with the uh, secondaries trying to tick up but we have no uptick so have to wait have to wait and uh, if this uh, if this support does in fact break, it's been pierced twice. Matter of fact, it's a pretty good uh, solid support in that you have pivot low here, almost a touch here, and uh, definite uh, prior to this. If all of this fails, all of this fails, then you have. A little bit over here near 45 but uh, more likely you have it down here at the uh, 4155 area so that is a good move to the downside you can have a flush and uh, you know crap all of this out it really freaks some people out um, we do not know if this support is going to hold so everything else that applies to the Dow and SPX applies to TNA and even though this one leads, we do not have an uptick. Sad, but true. Now, going on to the dollar. UUP. All right. Now, this one actually could be a tell. Perhaps. Uh, we ended... Where did we end? We ended right here. In the last video and uh, we had watched the doji stars hoping for a movement down we were hoping that this gap would not uh, fill and in fact that's exactly what happened this gap here filled as a friday came up kissed the 200 day moving average we had talked about that in the past that it was a possibility but we were hoping that it wouldn't be the case it's exactly what happened on friday and friday ended with a inverse hammer top of range very possible very possible turning point for the dollar uh, doing all kinds of stuff that it needs to do uh, optimally before turning back down so odds are good we have a good reversal candle here uh, that we can have a reversal in the dollar which would be great for the market as a whole but we don't have a strong topping area. I mean, it's it's uh, modest, and it's been uh, holding this entire time. Got a darker blip on Friday, but not, uh, you know, critical. Beyond that, you do have the MACD histogram going down. You do have the uh, fast stochastic going down. 14-day RSI moving average is still pointing up. Uh, slow stochastic is still holding high. CCI is ticking up. RSI is holding high. MACD histogram still ticking up. So even though it's very extended and could be a reversal area, um, we don't have anything definitive. We have no downtick. So um, we have to see what it wants to do. It's, a, it's as simple as that. Maybe we have a tell, but uh, we cannot trust it at this moment. Going on to... USO oil when oil is bullish the market is bullish and we had this 
just going in a sideways motion uh, ending on the last video which is right here didn't tell us anything we did have an uptick it was almost met but uh, fell, uh, failed by just a couple of pennies for a one day up movement um, and did it resolve one two three four it did it it really tried to on Thursday but uh, uh, I mean that's just within a penny or two so I'm not sure if that's a resolution or not but still this chart is not telling us anything this is still just sideways movement um, the deep uh, bottoming area and the heat map that we had before has worked itself off through time uh, we do have all the secondaries moving on up the best one being the MACD itself plenty of room to move to the upside but fast stochastic CCI already getting pretty high would I trust this for continued movement to the upside not without further uh, movement and development and breaking of this just sideways line there's nothing to be had here. And CompQ the NASDAQ. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. What an ugly, ugly fall. Uh, last video, last weekend. Inverse hammer, possible reversal signal. And uh, no uptick. And it didn't do anything for us down 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 we still have no uptick we do have a hammer at the bottom of the possible range perhaps it's a reversal signal we do have a bottoming area in the heat map continuing to uh, <laughs> to glow and everything attempting or at least a few things attempting to turn but nothing definitive there is nothing to do here until there is uh, some better movement to the upside and if we look for support where is it? It broke the area of support that we were looking at on the Dow and SPX, which is a really bad sign for the market overall. And it's down into this minor support right here. It could break rather easily. So do I trust this to go up? No, I do not. Be nice if it does, but uh, do I trust it at this moment? No, I do not. Going on to Apple. Mm -mm -mm. Man, oh man. I really do not like this chart. Um, they have made this sucker look so darn ugly. Uh, I really don't know why. Uh, this was the darling of everybody for so long. And uh, now, really nice hammer. Really nice reversal candle. But we have no uptick. Uh, almost getting back to 500. That's incredible. Uh, it has not even attempted to go back up and kiss the 200-day moving average. Uh, I would be looking for that at some point, but uh, as of yet, absolutely no optimism whatsoever. Uh, it just annihilated this previous support. Um, well, that's misleading. It definitely pierced the support by a huge margin, but it did uh, manage to close with it. Could it be caught at this point? it could um, certainly the heat map is rather nasty and very very extended to the downside uh, MACD histogram going up pretty darn nice um, do we have positive divergence on this still yes we do um, is anything else agreeing with this no not at the moment it does have a really large uh, volume flush Friday so that's another a good sign but uh, you know in the grand scheme of things and the zoom way out you can see it's uh, just titanic run that it had way back here at the beginning of the year and we can see that the uh, support that it's holding at right now it's actually the bottom of uh, the shadow from right here that it's barely holding on to above the problem becomes if it breaks this in force what's going to catch it there really isn't much of anything. So, do I like this? They've made it re look really, really bad. So, um, can I trust it? No. It's, uh, I mean, this kind of a move was inconceivable 
just a couple of months ago, and uh, yet it has happened. Going on to GE, trying to get a better read on the Dow. This one isn't so bad. Um, hammer, uh, very narrowly, the uh, bottom of a possible range, very narrowly. Fighting with the 200-day moving average. The question will become, can it close above it? And we just don't know at this point. The best thing about this one is it has plenty of support below it, down here at 19.5. Uh, does have a blip in the heat map. Does have movement up on the MACD histogram. It does have positive divergence on the MACD histogram. And the RSI and CCI are moving up. But uh, do I trust this one at the moment? It doesn't have an uptick. So, no, I do not. And going on to JP Morgan, the most important bank. Now this one is encouraging. It's able to has been able to hold above the 200-day moving average. It does not have an uptick. It does have a hammer at the bottom of a possible range. Uh, it does have a blip in the heat map. Actually, not a blip, just a generalized area in the heat map. Um, it is trying to move up on MACD histogram, RSI, CCI, but 14-day uh, RSI moving average stubbornly. Uh, pointing down. So, and this is, uh, I suppose you could make this a case study on the 14 day RSI moving average. It was moving down this entire time, even while the stock was going up, and in the end, it wins out. It's low, stock broke to new recent lows. So, um, mm, it will be really good if and when it turns up. I should say when, it won't be down forever. But uh, if we zoom way out all the way back to April, we can see it has lots of room to move still to the downside. We can have a secondary reset here and have a pop up, but um, overall, can uh, can that be trusted? A pop up? No. Not, uh, not yet, it can't. And moving on to XLF to finish off the evening. Now here's something that is interesting. I mean, JP Morgan looks encouraging. Here we have uh, financials as a whole, bottoming area, tick up on MACD histogram, moving up on the RSI and CCI. Notice the one difference between this and all the other charts. It has an uptick. How about that? which would suggest that JP Morgan would get a bounce at the 200-day moving average. That financialist as a whole will get a bounce at the 200-day moving average since they are both there. Uh, and this gives us an uptick target, unfortunately, only at about the 1555 area. So, um, mm, very interesting. This one is more positive than negative, at least in the very short term. Um, maybe if a deal can be struck with the financial cliff, then the market can jump as a whole. But as it stands at the moment, the only um, silver lining for the charts tonight is the financials as a whole. And is that enough to move the entire market up? Uh, it seems like that would be kind of a struggle. We'd need to see the same thing happen for TNA and for CompQ and for the Dow and then we can believe it in the short term. So close, perhaps uh, perhaps enough to do it, but uh, just not enough to believe in. And there it is. Hope everyone has a really nice weekend and Thanksgiving next weekend. Could see uh, volume dry up. Maybe that'll be uh, helpful to the market as a whole to rise. But uh, we shall see. As always, all investing decisions are your own. This chart and video for entertainment, educational, and consumption of time purposes only. Thank you very much.